Welcome to the Reloaders Workshop Tutorial Part 7. In this video we'll be talking about the new Firearm Collection Manager uh, that will be in Release 1.1.007 of Reloaders Workshop. Now today is November 25th, 2016. 1.1.007 uh, should be released sometime during the month of December of 2016. So it's not out there yet. I'm just giving you a little preview. For those of you who have been using Reloaded Workshop, you'll recognize the top part of the Firearms tab. Uh, it's basically just a list of your, your firearms, the model, serial number, description, the caliber, or the primary caliber anyway. Now, what used to be on this list as well were some of the specifications, like the headspace, the neck sizing, things like that. What's changed on the list here is that we don't have the specs anymore. We have the acquisition information, where we bought it the date, the price, tax, shipping, and total. Uh, so that, that's a little different than, than what you're used to seeing on the firearms page. Now, the other addition to the firearms portion of the, uh, of, of the firearms tab is the cost details up here uh, at the top. It gives you the cost of the firearms, the, the price that the, the dealer originally charged you, any accessories that you added, which we'll get to in a minute. Uh, taxes, shipping, total costs, and our grand total with tax and shipping is 703 for this particular firearm. Now if I select a different firearm, it'll give me the cost details for that firearm. So I can just kind of page through my various firearms and see exactly how much I paid for each and how much the, the, the firearm is worth with all the extra accessories attached like triggers and stocks and scopes and red dots and uh, you name it. Um, that's uh, basically gives me a total cost for that. Thing. I can even put in a backpack if I want to if I'm gonna for some bizarre reason attach a backpack to my rifle. Um, so you, you can you can add almost anything to the uh, to a firearm. Now that's one of the requests I've been getting is, you know, people want to be able to add red dots or bipods and things like that. So this new firearm collection system or collection manager uh, takes care of all the requests that I've been getting over the past year. And I think it's fairly easy to use. Now, the top part works exactly the same way as it always did. You can hit add up here and you can add a firearm um, or you can edit uh, an existing firearm. Uh, you can also edit the firearm details. Now, one of the things, a couple of things have changed on this firearm details page. One, I've added tax and shipping information. Uh, uh, it used to have just the price here. So now it's got price, tax, shipping, and gives you a total. Uh, you'll notice in the middle here, there used to be a, a section uh, just above the notes that had uh, things like your stock, your trigger, and your uh, scope information. Well, all that's changed. That's, that's done in a different way now. So that part of this particular uh, dialogue has been removed. Okay. Other than the, the, the tax and shipping, though, this is, dialogue remains just pretty much the same. I did add a description here, uh, and I moved the Edit Firearms Detail button over under the uh, Firearms Specs group. Okay. But it made more sense there. Now, down on the bottom of this page, or the firearms tab, are the parts and accessories. Now it looks kind of complicated here, but it, it's really not. It's really fairly easy. Down here I have my list of all the, the different parts and accessories that I've entered into my database. I have some scopes here. There's my Barska Squad Extreme, Loophold. I've got a Sightmark uh, magnifier for one of my red dots. I put the magnifiers under the scope uh, heading. Uh, just because it, it's basically a, the same thing as a scope, it just doesn't have a reticle. It uses a red dot. Okay, then we have our red dot sights. I've got my loophole delta point here, my sight mark uh, red dot sight. I've got a streamlight weapon light, uh, my, a trigger from Apex Tactical, so on and so forth. Uh, all my different uh, parts and accessories. Now, I get the same information on the parts and accessories list as I do up on the firearms list. I get the manufacturer part number, serial number, description. 
Of course, instead of a caliber for my part, I have uh, the firearm that it's attached to currently. Okay. And then I have my acquisition information, where I bought it, the date, the price, tax, shipping, and total. Okay. So the, the, the list on the, for the parts and accessories is very similar to the list for the firearms, as far as the, the data that it's got. Now you'll notice here that I have groups. Now you see here's the scope group, the red dot group, the laser light group. Um, if I want, I can click uh, under additional actions here. I have a show groups checkbox. I can turn that off and it'll take all the groups out, make my uh, list a little, a little easier to, to look, to deal with. Won't have all the group names in there. I can sort them by manufacturer. So regardless of whether these are sco uh, scopes or stocks or whatever, uh, they'll all be grouped by manufacturer when I turn off the groups. If I turn groups back on, you'll see that they're separated into their various groups. Like here's an Apex Tactical Trigger under the Trigger Group, and here's an Apex Tactical Compression Spring Kit under my Firearm Parts. If I turn off groups, now they're listed together, both under Apex Tactical. So I can see all the Apex Tactical stuff that I, uh, that I own. Also under Additional Actions, I have the Show All checkbox. Now, if I turn that off or uncheck it, you'll see that it changes the list a little bit. What it's listing now are only those items that are attached to the currently selected firearm up top. In this case, the M&P 15. And if I look down here, I can see that both my Sightmark Magnifier and my Sightmark Red Dot are currently attached to my M&P 15. I can turn off the groups here and make that a little easier to read down on the bottom there. When you've only got one item in a group, it's, it's really not, uh, not necessary to show the groups, unless you have a lot of different kinds of items on a firearm, then you might want to turn on your groups. Okay. And now as I click on each of my firearms, I can see my list of what parts are attached for to that firearm. For example, here's my M&P 40L Pro Series. I've got these four items. I got my loophole delta point, a weapon light, uh, you know, a trigger, a competition spring kit, and so on. Uh, my Remington 700 has my loophole DXR patrol scope. Remington has the sight mark stuff on it. Nothing on the two Winchesters. They're just basically right out of the box stock. Okay, so. That's what uh, turning the show all off, the checkbox off does. It allows you to, to see just those items that are on the currently selected firearm. I'm going to go ahead and turn all this on. Now, if I want to add a new accessory, for example, um, I want to add a, I'm going to get a, 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 P, a Magpul PRS stock for my M&P 15 here. So what I'm going to do is down here on the bottom, there's two sets of Add, Edit, View, and Remove buttons. Uh, just like every, every tab has the same set of Add, Edit, View, and Remove buttons at the bottom. Okay. On the Firearms tab, it's, since it's basically broken up into two sections, it has two sets of Add, Edit, View, and Remove buttons. The one on the top is for obviously for the firearms, and the ones on the bottom are for the parts and accessories. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Add here. Uh, now I want to create a, a stock. So I'm going to select furniture as my accessory type. I'm going to select Magpul Industries as my manufacturer. Now, one thing I want to talk about with this manufacturer here. The manufacturers tab has been modified slightly as well. Now if we look over here at the various uh, types of products that each manufacturer offers, You'll see that I've added scopes, red dots, lasers, triggers, furniture, bipods, firearm parts, and other. Uh, so if you are on the firearms page and you're trying to add a new, a new part and you don't see your manufacturer here, and cancel out, go to the Manufacturers tab, and find the manufacturer. Now if the manufacturer is not listed, then hit the Add button and add that manufacturer. Now, I get questions all the time from people. Hey, I, I don't see a manufacturer in, in, in my, I'm trying to add a, fire, a new firearm. I don't see my manufacturer in the list. Well, 
you got to go back to the manufacturer's page and add it. Not every manufacturer on the planet is in the initial database. Okay, I, you, you've got to go back and add manufacturers on occasion. Now, as, as time goes on, I add more and more manufacturers and uh, things like that. But in the meantime, it's all set up there, right there for you to add your own manufacturers. Just make sure that you click on or check the appropriate uh, products you know that, that that manufacturer provides. Okay. For example, here's the furniture. Now, if I look over here at Magpul, let me find my Magpul. Okay. We'll see under Magpul, it has furniture listed. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and click on other gear because I do sell some other some other uh, items there. So I've got furniture selected here. Now the re so when I'm over here on my firearms page and I'm adding a new accessory, if I select furniture here, it will only show those manufacturers that have furniture checked on the manufacturer's page. Okay. So you, so if you don't see the manufacturer and the manufacturer is not on the manufacturer's page or tab, you need to add it. If it's already there, you need to make sure that it has its furniture check mark checked. Okay, so that's, I get this question all the time. Why, why doesn't my manufacturer show up? Well, it's only showing up for uh, areas that, it, that manufacturer makes things, in this case, furniture. Okay, now the uh, part number for my PRS stock is MAG307. It doesn't have a serial number. I'm going to change the description to PRS uh, 307. Adjustable stock. Call it that. Okay. Now I got this from Midway USA. Uh, I'll pick a day here. I Man, I got that on November second. Price was two forty nine ninety five. I didn't pay tax because I bought it from Midway, but I did pay shipping of eight ninety five. Okay, and I'll add that. You see now that that item has been added under furniture. It added Magpul Industries PRS adjustable slot stock with all the information that I typed in about it. Now you'll notice the firearm column is blank. That's because I haven't attached it to a firearm yet. So what I want to do is I want to select my Smith & Wesson M&P 15. Okay, that's the, the rifle that I'm going to attach this new stock to. And then I select the stock and up here under additional actions I simply hit attach. And it will attach it to my M&P. Okay, if you look up at the top, I detach, you hit the attach, and if it's already attached, the button will change to detach. So I can, <clears throat> excuse me, I can detach an item just as easily as I can attach it. Now, if you look up at the top here under the grand total and the accessories cost and so on, when I attach this stock, you'll see those numbers change. Okay, so it's giving me the new totals or the new value of, of that particular uh, firearm, in this case 1908-98, including tax, shipping, everything else that I've, that I've paid, all the accessories, the cost of the firearm itself, and so on. <coughs> Excuse me. This total cost up here is the total cost of just the firearms and the accessories without tax and shipping. Okay. Now, the last thing I wanted to mention here is the filters under parts and accessories and these are simple to, to operate basically uh, they're check boxes so if I uncheck scopes you'll see that scopes will disappear from my list at the bottom I can check it again you'll see the scope group returns okay same thing for red dots or lasers but I only want to see scopes for example I can turn everything else off except for my scopes or I can add my triggers uh, or my uh, red dots, you know, so I can uh, filter out items that I don't want to see 
firearm parts and other kind of I filter those out quite often because the firearm parts, for example, I uh, I build uh, firearms and uh, quite often. And what I'll do is I'll put all the different parts that I use to to build a firearm under firearm parts. Uh, and then what I'll do is I'll I'll add all the parts that I use say, to make uh, an AR-15 or an AR-10 or, or something like that, uh, for example. And then I simply attach them all. Uh, I create the uh, the record up here under firearms for the lower receiver, for example, if I'm building an AR-15. I'll put in the stock number, uh, you know, all the uh, manufacturer, all that information uh, for the, the lower only. And it may, co I don't know, it may cost 100, 200 bucks for, for the lower. Uh, so the firearm cost will only be a few hundred bucks. But the accessories then would be all the parts that make up an AR-15. So I would add all of those uh, down here, and I would simply use uh, firearm parts for things like you know the, the, the barrel and things like that. Um, I may, uh, you know, I'm going to have furniture. I'll have a stock and a forend and things like that. Uh, I'm going to be putting a trigger on it. So you know, I'll have all of these different pieces that make up a firearm set up under my parts and accessories and then I'll simply attach them and that'll give me a total on exactly how much it cost me to build that firearm. Okay. So essentially that's the firearm collection manager or the new firearm collection manager. I think it, uh, uh, it's a lot nicer, a lot easier to use than the, the old uh, version. Uh, remember the firearms were only added to Reloaders Workshop initially because I wanted to be able to do batch testing with a specific firearm or I wanted to be able to create a batch of reloaded ammunition for a specific firearm so I would want to have uh, the uh, uh, headspace information and uh, you know all of this kind of thing uh, set up the turret click, the sight height, all of those things for ballistics calculations, for uh, uh, sizing the uh, the uh, cases for this particular firearm. I have my bullet specifications, so if I'm using a specific bullet, you know, what overall length do I use? What kind of jump should I set? Things like that. So everything on this particular dialogue, uh, or most of it, is used elsewhere in Reloaders Workshop. Okay, for you know, for determining which firearms can be used for a batch test and so on and so forth. Okay. On the firearm details page, this is all purely optional stuff. It, it's not used anywhere else in Reloaders Workshop. This is purely for your own uh, uh, collection information. Okay, Reloaders Workshop really doesn't doesn't use any of this. Only on this only this dialogue is what uh, Reloaders Workshop uses. So initially, like I said, they were added only for uh, uh, Reloaders Workshop, so do batch testing, things like that. Over the past year, uh, since Reloaders Workshop was first released, I've gotten so many requests for different things, uh, for doing the firearms management and so on. And this is what I came up with. Uh, it seems to, uh, I'm pretty sure it, it meets the needs of all the different requests that I've uh, received over the past year. And I think it's, it looks a little intimidating at first, but it's uh, actually quite simple to use. That's all for this video. I hope you liked it. If so, please click the like button. Maybe even subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching, and happy reloading.